Hello, everybody. Your Connect Guru here, back to follow up on Connect 8 Audio. You know, it doesn't seem like that long ago I did a video on using audio with Adobe Connect, but that was version 7.5, and now we're up to version 8.2. So I thought it would be appropriate to revisit the subject since a lot of things have changed in the interim. My intention is to cover every aspect of Adobe Connect Audio, which turns out to be quite an extensive subject. So I've divided this episode into a four part series. In part one, we'll talk about how to set up audio providers and audio profiles on the Connect server. Parts two through four talk about managing audio from inside the meeting room. Part two will cover using your computer microphone for audio. In part three, we'll talk about integrated audio conferencing. And in part four, we'll cover universal voice. So strap in and hold on because we have a lot of great information to share with you. When you set up a Connect meeting room, you have the option of specifying an audio conference bridge if you want to use one. You don't have to though. You can just leave it set to the default, do not include any audio conference with this meeting. But if you do decide to use an audio conference, you have a couple of different ways to approach it. You could manually add the audio conference info by selecting the bottom option and entering the data. The only advantage you're getting if you do though, is that the data you enter here will be included in the invitation when you get to step three of creating the meeting room. Notice though that there is a second option. Now this option will only be visible if you've already set up audio profiles for yourself. It allows you to choose one of those audio profiles to use for your meeting audio. So what's an audio profile and how do you set one up? I think I want to take a step back and explain this from the top down. So first, let's make sure all our options are enabled. Under administration, let's check compliance and control pods management, and make sure these two checkboxes are not checked. If one or both are checked, some of the features I'm about to show you won't work. Now that you've done that, the first thing you'll need is an audio provider. An audio provider can refer to an audio conference account with one of several companies that provide conference services that integrate with Adobe Connect. or it can refer to a collection of instructions that you set up that tells Connect how to dial in and establish a connection to any toll-free number. This is called universal voice. For any audio provider, any meeting host can create an audio profile. So an audio provider might be used for several audio profiles. Let's take a look at how this works step by step. First, if you're an administrator, you can find any pre-configured audio providers under the audio providers link. The ones that are listed here out of the box are those companies that integrate with Adobe Connect. If you have an account with one of these services, you just need to enable it by selecting it, clicking the edit button, and changing the provider status to enabled. You can also create additional audio providers that will connect to any toll-free number. These ad hoc audio providers are called universal voice connections. Now if the universal voice audio provider is going to be used by multiple meeting hosts, you'll want to create it here under administration and audio providers. But if you're a meeting host and you want a universal voice audio provider that's just for you, then you need to click on the My Profile link at the upper right of the page and here you find another audio providers link. This is for your own private audio providers. To set up a universal voice audio provider, click the new provider button, give the provider a name, For status, select Enabled. The URL is optional, so you can leave that blank if you want to. The info in the Dial in Numbers box will be displayed in the Meeting Room, so I usually add at least two lines. In the first one, I enter the area serviced by my audio bridge, for example, North America, and the telephone number. In the second line, I enter the participant code, like so. You can add more info if you want to, but that usually covers it for me. 
On the other hand, if you'd rather have tight control on who calls that number, you might decide to put something else in here, like a message that tells participants to ask the host for conference info. For example, you may be broadcasting the audio from the phone call and prefer that attendees listen on their computer speakers. So you only give the dial-in information to those who indicate that they can't listen on their computer. The dial-in steps box is where the action takes place. Connect is going to use the information you enter here to dial into your audio conference. Now, I typically add three steps, but I've seen others use as many as seven. It just depends on what your conference bridge requires in the form of authorization codes. The first step is the number to dial. The label can be anything that helps you remember what this is. I'll enter dial in. Under key slash number, we'll enter the number we want Connect to call into. The second step is to wait. We want Connect to wait until the audio conference has already requested the participant code before it tries to dial it. So I'll select delay from the action menu and enter wait for the label. I found with my conference bridge that eight seconds works pretty well. You may have to experiment to figure out what works best for you. To indicate eight seconds in milliseconds, I'll enter 8,000 here. The third step is the participant code. I'll select DTMF from the actions menu, which is going to simulate somebody dialing a number on the telephone keypad, and enter code for the label and the participant code under key slash number. If your participant code requires a pound sign or a star, make sure you include it with the number. There's one other option here that I need to mention. Under key slash number, notice that this is a drop down menu and that there is an option here to allow the host to provide the code. If I select this option, then I'll have to add the code when I set up the audio profile which is what we're going to look at next. This option would be more commonly used when you set up the audio provider under administration. That way, several meeting hosts could use the same configuration, but provide different authorization codes, which puts them on different conference lines. Now that you have the dial-in steps configured, let's test them. I'll click the Test Dial-in Steps button at the bottom. With my speakers turned on, I'll be able to hear the interaction between the telephone conference and Connect. Welcome to Ready Conference. For security verification, please enter your passcode followed by the pound or hash key. Please hold while I confirm your passcode. Thank you. Your passcode is confirmed. When you hear the tone, you will be the first person to join the meeting. The line will be silent until another person joins. If it fails to establish a connection, you may need to change the duration of the delay. Keep working with it until you get it just right. Click the Save button to save the audio provider. Very good. So now we have our audio providers, whether they're for integrated audio or for universal voice. But the providers don't do anything unless you set up an audio profile for them. So that's our next step. Audio profiles are only set up under the My Profile area for meeting hosts. In the case of a universal voice connection, setting up the audio profile couldn't be simpler. Just click on My Audio Profiles, click the New Profile button, select a provider, and give the audio profile a name. Now if you set up the audio provider to require the host to provide the authorization code, You'll also have a field here for that code. Don't forget to click the Save button. If you're setting up an audio profile for an integrated audio provider, there's more data that needs to be entered. I'll select our Premier Global for North America account. Of course, you'll name the profile. Then you'll need to provide the client ID, the Premier Global password, and the moderator code. The data required might be a little different for other audio conference providers, but it should all be given to you when you sign up for your account with that provider. Great. Now that we have our audio providers and corresponding audio profiles, we're ready to set up our meeting rooms. In part two of this series, we'll talk about how to get meeting audio started and how to use your computer microphone to broadcast audio.